So last deck profile we did gimmick puppet synchros. This time we'll do more machine synchros, except this time it's going to be based around Karakuri Symphonics. Now this time it's more consistent I would say because inherently Symphonics can make this Karakuri synchros by themselves. The main synchros that you will be summoning will be Burrito and Bure. Now these two Karakuri synchros require one or more non-tuner machine type monsters. And in this entire deck, the main deck consists of only machine type monsters, so that fits in that category, including the symphonic monsters, which means these synchros can be made pretty easily in this deck. So the Karakuri lineup will be this guy, 919, 224, 248, 313, 339, and that is the Karakuri lineup. Great number, 919 has the effect where you, when you destroy your opponent's monster by battle and send it to the graveyard, you get to select one level 4 or lower card for your monster in your graveyard and special summon it in the face-up defense position. Now this card's effect is pretty decent because you get to bring back a monster if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle and it has to also send it to graveyard which means it does not work against pendulums or anything that gets banished. So yes, this card is like a one card synchro play, however this card does require to destroy the opponent's monster by battle, and it's not the strongest monster in the world, 1700 attack. However, this archetype relies around battle position changing, so usually monsters are weaker in defense mode, I would say. So this guy has a decent chance of having its effect going off. Namba 224. So this card has a really basic effect where it allows you to extra normal a Karakuri monster in addition to your normal summon or set. And you can only gain this effect once per turn. Now that effect right there, once per turn, is actually important because you actually have two extra normals in this deck and you can only use one of them, so you gotta be wary of that. Also, Karakuris lack the ability to spam, so this card makes it pretty key for the archetype. However, since we're also running Symphonics, that basically covers up that Karakuri weakness. Namba 248. This card's effect reads, when it's normal summoned or special summoned, select one monster on the field to change its battle position. Now this card effect is really key because card crews will rely on battle position changing because their effects will go off if their battle positions are changed, for the most part of the archetype anyways. And it can also change the battle position of your opponent's monster. So if your opponent had like something that has like 4,000 attack with zero defense, you can just switch in defense and then just kill it with like a Karibu or something, right? So yeah, this card is really useful. Namba 339. So this card is basically in the deck because it's an Earth Karakuri monster, level 3, non-tuner machine type monster, and its effect is select one face-up monster on the field, send it to your graveyard after it's been flipped face up. So this card's effect is mandatory, so you don't want to flip it face up while you only have one face up monster on your field and your opponent controls none, because then you'll be forced to send your own monster, or itself to the graveyard basically. So this card's effect is not really relevant, but it's basically relevant synchro material I would say. Namba 313. So before we officially talk about this card's effect, we must talk about the Karakuri archetype effect because this card relies heavily on the archetype effect for its own effects to work. So all Karakuris must attack if able, and also when they're targeted as for an attack, their battle position changes. So basically battle position matters a lot in this deck. So if you have a Karakuri monster in attack mode, they must attack if able, which means that if they have Swords of Revealing Light, that means they are unable to attack. So basically, it forces you to enter your battle phase regardless if you want to attack or not. So you can't really summon them in attack position and hope for them to live to main phase 2 if your opponent had a monster that was stronger than the Karakuri monster. If they had a defense position monster, then you'll be forced to attack the defending monster. Even if it had higher defense, you'll take a bit of damage, however, your monsters won't be destroyed by battle. But you'll be taking some damage if that happens. Now, the reason why you might want your Karakuri monsters in attack mode as well is because their battle position changes. So if you have a Karakuri monster that has high defense, you want it in attack mode then. Because if your opponent attacks it, then it switches in defense mode. If it's in defense mode, 
then it'll switch in attack mode if your opponent attacks it in defense mode. So it's kind of complicated, but you'll get used to it. So they're about to changes when they're selected as an attack target. So you gotta be wary of that. So this card's effect reads as follows. When you take battle damage from a battle involving this card, all face-up card cream monsters you control gain 800 attack and 800 defense until the end phase. While it's in attack position, it cannot be destroyed by battle. So this card can stall, basically. When it's selected as attack target in defense mode, you switch it in attack mode, and then you take some damage, then it's attack and defense boosts up by 800. Basically, if your opponent tries to attack again, this time it will switch in defense, and now it's 26 defense. If your opponent cannot kill it at 26 defense, then you're safe. However, it's it'll switch back in attack mode, and its effects goes off again. So you'll take a bit of damage, however, it keeps getting stronger. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, basically. Um, this card can stall very heavily. It actually prevented a OTK by Mermel somehow. So it's pretty MVP for stalling for Karakuri, I would say. Karakuri Anatomy. Well, each time when a Karakuri monster's battle position changes, place one Karakuri counter on this card, max two, send this card to the graveyard to draw one card for each Karakuri counter. So basically, you can change the battle position of Karakuri's pretty easily and just get two free cards, basically. Karakuri Cash Cache. Select one face up Karakuri monster you control, add one level 4 or lower Karakuri monster from your deck to your hand, then change the battle position of the selected monster. So basically, this card helps with the battle position changing, and also it is a search card, so that helps with the consistency of getting out the Karakuri monsters. Now we're on to Symphonics. Symphonic Warrior Guitars. Of course, this is the main Symphonic monster. You always want it in your hand because it's that awesome. Because it can special summon non-tuner monsters, tuner monsters. We'll be using all of those. And there's crazy combos with this one pendulum monster. So basically, you get to discard one card from your hand to special summon one Symphonic Warrior monster from your deck. Basically, we'll be using a level 1 tuner, level 2 tuner, level 3 tuner, level 4 non-tuner, and level 5 non-tuner as well. So, yes, this card you really want in your hand because this is the card that covers up the card crew weakness in being that they can't spam. This card helps with the uh, spam, I would say. Symphonic Warrior Sizer. Basically, this card searches out the Symphonic Warrior guitars when it's flipped face up. And it can also replicate these effects of a Symphonic monster on the field or in your graveyard. Symphonic Sizers can also banish itself from the graveyard to special summon one banished Symphonic monsters from the banished zone back to the field. So basically, it's a stepping stone for another synchro play. Symphonic Warrior Piano, its effect is not really useful in this deck because they're all already machine type monsters. So basically, its effect has the ability to change the monster type of a symphonic monster. So if you ever use this card's effect and the type isn't relevant, you, I guess you could just pick like Divine Beast for fun, I guess. I'm not sure. But either way, this card's effect is not relevant. But if you need it to be banished from your graveyard, just reselect machine type monster. Symphonic Warrior Drums. So its effect has the ability to change the attribute of a Symphonic Warrior monster on the field to a different attribute, basically. So this card's effect is not really relevant. Again, you can just banish and declare another attribute, I guess. It doesn't really matter in this deck. But it's relevant for one synchro, which would be Nechuria Barkeon, which requires an Earth Tuner monster. So that's the only relevant effect where it's actually good. Symphonic Warrior Basis. So basically, whenever you have the wrong levels on the field, you might need some level modding. Basis can do that for you. You can select one face-up Symphonic Monster on the field and increase its level by the number of cards in your hand. These changes last until the end phase. So basically, this card can change levels of Symphonic Monsters. Also, it can do it from your graveyard by banishing it, it from your graveyard. So this card's really good, despite being a level 1 tuner monster, being a really low level tuner as well. 
but that could make some big plays because it's in, its level can increase exponentially or you just need like one or two levels just to make your play so it's ver really versatile and also the reason why I'm running all three of the different symphonic tuner monsters is because they have different levels Karakuris have a level 7 and a level 8 to grow and you have a bunch of non-tuner monsters that are also different levels so having more variety I would say helps even though bases can already do all those levels basically dependent on the number of cards in your hand however sometimes you can't control your hand that effectively and you need the other tuner monsters which is why we have the level 3 and level 2 uh, in here as well symphonic warrior mics so this is the level 5 non-tuner monster i was talking about and this card allows you to extra normal a monster during this turn so basically you have the Karkuri monster that can allow you to extra normal as well as this card. So basically their effects don't stack because you can only gain the effect once per turn. However, its effect is useful because usually this card will either be good synchro material or good effect wise. Because you can special summon this card from your deck using the Symphonic Warrior guitars. And also Sizers can also copy this card. In your graveyard so if you discard symphonic warrior mics from your hand using the symphonic guitars effect to special summon the symphonic sizer sizers can therefore copy mics then you get an additional normal summon this turn so that will extend your synchro plays as well we also got tin goldfish in this deck just in case karakuris can't like normal summon themselves again or special summon any symphonic monsters this card basically covers up more of the character weakness I would say and this card works very well with the extra normal because when it's normal summon you get to summon another monster so it helps you spam the board we got called the haunted because if your powerful synchro monsters get destroyed you can just bring them back also called the haunted works well with the uh, card crew monster that can change battle position when it's normal summon or special summon because if your opponent like attacks during the battle phase you just call the haunted special summon this card then switch that monster to defense position as well as this card effect also works with the other card crew monsters so it could help you activate more effects including like card crew anatomy you would gain a counter during your opponent's turn then during your turn, just switch the battle, just bam, draw two cards. So Call of Hunting is really useful in this deck. Forbidden Lance. So basically, Karakuris are really defenseless when it comes to back row. So I've added Forbidden Lance to counter that a bit. As well as it can also work during the damage step, just in case some monsters try to kill it by battle. Or if you have a monster that is weaker but you want to punch over something then that could work that way as well Book of Moon defensive Solemn Warning defensive Solemn Notice also defensive I'm thinking about like Solemn Notice and Solemn Notice can really cripple the Karakuri deck so you might want to take out Solemn Notice and add in wiretaps to counter the other Solemn Notice playing against you but I'm putting Solemn Notice in because it's a really powerful trap card right now. But yeah, most likely we'll have to trade it in for the wiretap to counteract the other Solemn Notices. Because this deck really requires the synchro plays to go through. Otherwise this deck will fall apart indeed. Bottomless trap hole. Defensive traps basically. Regeki offense basically to sack your opponent with. So for the extra deck we have Karakuri Burrito. This card is like the draw power of the Karakuris as well because whenever a Karakuri monster battle position is changed you get to draw one card. Good thing it's only once per turn otherwise this card would definitely be broken. Also when it's synchro summon you get to special summon one Karakuri monster from your deck. Karakuri Beret also when it's synchro summoned you get to special summon one card crew monster from your deck. And then once per turn, you can select one monster on the field, change its battle position. So that effect really helps because card crews rely heavily on battle position changing. Stardust Dragon, defensive against like Regeki and stuff like that. Scrap Dragon, to get rid of the uh, annoying stuff like 
gravity bind. Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon. Surprisingly, this card is actually useful because it's a level 7 Armites basically during the battle phase, so your opponent can't activate like Shadal effects, like flip effects, in during the battle phase, or Utopia negation effects, or something like that. So this card is really useful during the battle phase. Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. It can negate a level 5 or higher monster effect on the field, activating its effect. And it can also stop level 5 or higher synchro monsters from being targeted. Basically, it's really defensive. Black Rose Dragon has the effect to nuke the entire board. Basically, board wipe means you might be desperate, but it could change games. Koyo Guardian, decent effect, high attack, level 6 synchro, basically. Your Chariot Barkion, you can make it in the stack because card crews are all Earth type monsters and you just need like the Symphonic monster to beat Earth or just a card crew monster in general. And basically it's an anti-trap, basically negates everything trap related and basically this deck really hates back row. So Nurture Barkion makes sense. You could probably throw in Nurture of Beast, however that card is a bit hard to make because it's a level 5 monster, but it's possible. But I don't have him in here because it's a bit more difficult to get out. We also got Trisha Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Basically a very strong synchro to get out because it can banish like 3 cards and that's really good. Big Eye because the number of level 7 synchro spam is actually pretty real and we can make Big Eye using 2 synchro monsters so we can take control of a powerful monster on your opponent's side field if they have one. Gear Giant X. This card allows you to search out a machine type monster from your deck to your hand. Basically you add that Symphonic Warrior Guitarist because that's the main card you want to get into your hand. The odds of summoning this card is pretty low as it would say in this deck because normally you would just go straight in your synchro plays. However, Tinkle Fish would make this card pretty easily, I would say. Exiton Knight, rarely go into this, into this card, however it's there because of the board wipe potential and it's really easy to make i would say so this is what the entire deck looks like and it's really fun i suggest you try it out and see if it's your kind of play style it has very fast paced synchro summoning and big synchros at that and i'll catch you guys later